Lord beloved, welcome to CHOF Bible Fellowship. I'm Bishop Dr. W.F. Houston Jr., Executive Director of Christian House of Faith, CHOF, and CHOF Ministry. I pray that your time with me will bring you love, joy, peace, wisdom, and knowledge. Beloved, did you know that you can assist the favor of God? Well, if you didn't, I'm here to tell you that you can. Favor is a gift from God to us. This morning's message is entitled, Favor, a gift that will change your life. And our focal scripture for the morning comes from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. And I'll be reading from the New King James Bible Version. I present to you Bishop Dr. W.F. Houston, Jr. And the word of God reads, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Once again, our text reads, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. May God add his delightful blessings to the hearers and doers of his holy words. Beloved, your life can be surrounded by God's favor each and every day, all day. You see, with God's favor, doors will be open for you. You'll be able to walk through each of those doors covered with God's favor. You see, beloved, When you're in God's favor, you become one of his favorites. Your actions and attitudes in every situation will become different. When you're in God's favor, you believe beyond any doubt that success lies ahead. And in God's favor, you'll find the courage to lay down your anxieties, including your fears. Mm -hmm. Beloved. This morning, I'm going to show you how you can have God's favor each and every day. As a matter of fact, beloved, I got some good news for you right here. God has blessed you with his gift, and that gift is his favor. You know, many Christians believe they should somehow earn the favor of God, but the truth is we already have his favor. Beloved, God saved us because of his favor toward us. If we look at Ephesians 2, 8, once again, it tells us, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Beloved, right here, I want you to recognize and realize that grace is favor. It's a gift from God to us before we were ever born. But like any other gift that we receive, we must be able to open it. And after it's open, we must believe, trust, and have all confidence that it will fit into our life. Beloved, God's grace is our salvation. You see, this is how we know that we have favor with God. You see, He comes to rescue and remove us from all harm and danger when we don't have the sense to know that 
We're released, liberated, or eliminated from the menacing danger and damage of hazardous destruction. God's favor is a power that changes things for us. Beloved, the primary point that I want to make to you this morning is you and I are saved by God's favor. And I'm not just talking about favor that's going to get you into heaven when you die. You see, to be saved means to be delivered, protected, preserved, healed, and made whole. Beloved, God's favor covers every area of our lives. You see, by his favor, he's taking care of everything we'll ever need. And I'm speaking of the spirit, soul, and the body. In Ephesians 2, 7, the word reads, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Beloved, what the word of God is saying to us here is that God's supernatural grace is so enormous that's going to take all the ages to come for him to show us all the riches of his grace and the kindness that he's given us in Christ Jesus. Beloved, let me tell you right here. You don't have to wait until you get to heaven to experience the fullness of God's favor. Let's look at Romans 5.8. Romans 5.8 says, but God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. What the scripture just said is, even while you were in your sinful character, still rebelling against him, before you were born again, he was giving you his favor. Beloved, God is pouring out his favor on us right here and right now. It was God's grace at work in your life that enabled you to be born again. Mm -hmm, that's right. You see, from the moment you stepped into your new life, the moment you made Jesus Lord, God's favor began working nonstop on your behalf. You see, beloved, being born again was just a starting place for his favor to be poured out on you. And you know something else? He'll pour out more grace and more favor on you every moment of your life if you just receive it. Beloved, you have to accept and unwrap his gift in order to obtain his new blessing for you. Mm -hmm. Let's look at Psalms 512. Psalms 512 says, For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous with favor. You will surround him or her as with a shield. Beloved, that scripture is talking about the born again child of God who serves him. Mm -hmm. It's talking about you, beloved. Jesus made you righteous. You see, when Jesus shed his blood, he made righteousness available to all mankind. And with it came the favor of God. Beloved, God's favor surrounds you constantly. But you have to be born again into righteousness. It can't be lip service. You got to walk the talk. You know, we should always see ourselves wrapped in God's favor 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. Seven days a week. You see, every morning when you get up, why don't you just throw off the covers and jump out of bed and say, I'm the righteous Lord. Your favor surrounds me like a shield. Beloved, the only way to receive God's favor is by faith. You got to have belief, trust, and all confidence in it. Now, there may be someone out there saying, well, Bishop Houston, I know a lot of believers who don't enjoy the kind of favor you're talking about right here. Their lives are full of tragedy and disappointment. So why doesn't God surround them with favor? Well, I'm glad you asked. Beloved, let me tell you. God does surround them with favor. They just don't know it. So they can't take advantage of what he's given them. Mm -hmm. Let's look at 2 Peter 1, 2. 2 Peter 1, 2 says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Look at that again. It says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God 
and of Jesus our Lord. What 2 Peter 1 and 2 is telling us here is that God's grace is multiplied to us through knowledge. Mm -hmm. Beloved, the first thing you have to do before you can receive the benefits of God's favor is to know that they're yours. Then you have to receive them by faith. In other words, you have to have unwavering belief, unwavering trust, and all confidence that is God's gift of grace to you. Remember Ephesians 2.8? It says, God saved you by his grace. You see, God's favor provides every possible blessing and goodness he has to give to you. And it starts with being saved. That's right, beloved. It starts with salvation. Your part in it is faith. In other words, you have to believe and receive all he has given. Now, let me see if I can say this a little more simpler for you. Grace is God saying, here's all the good things I have to give to you. Faith is you saying, thank you. I'll take it. Now, there may be someone out there asking, so Bishop Houston, where do we get the faith to receive? Well, once again, I'm glad you asked. The answer is simple. Let's let the word of God give us the answer. Romans 10, 17. Romans 10, 17 says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Beloved, we found out the truth about God's favor goodness and blessings as we hear his word on these things. Faith comes, we believe and begin to receive what his word says. You know, beloved, I remember the first time I heard that healing belonged to me because it was part of my salvation. When I really comprehended that it was part of what Jesus brought and paid for on the cross, my life changed that evening. Beloved, I stepped into a new dimension of God's favor. But until then, sure, I believe people could be healed, and I always prayed when I got sick. Sometimes I would receive, <laughs> and sometimes I wouldn't. But it wasn't until I really, really comprehended that God's word said that healing belonged to me by the blood of Jesus, and that it was part of the favor provided by God's salvation that I understood grace. And you know, once I understood grace, what it was, Faith came. Beloved, I received it and I began to live healed. You see, that's exactly how favor works. It's always surrounding us. Healing was there all the time for me. It was always part of God's favor. And once I comprehended it, all I did was reach out and take it by faith. Beloved, God is searching right now for someone to bless with his favor. You know, it's so sad that many times we're so slow to receive God's favor. We think we're waiting on him when he's actually waiting on us to receive it. You see, God has already done everything it takes for you and I to be fully cared for while living here on earth. 1 Peter 1, 3 says, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Beloved, right here, the scripture is telling us God has provided every blessing, health, prosperity, peace of mind, joy, deliverance from sin, and everything that pertains to our good life. Now watch this. God tops it all off with life in heaven when we leave this earth. Beloved, it's all part of his favor. All we have to do is stay ready to receive. <laughs> and you know, beloved, actually, we can't get away from God's favor. Second Chronicles 16, 9 tells us the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth 
to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect. Now, let's look at this word perfect. This word perfect right here doesn't refer to someone who never makes a mistake. Mm -mm. It means someone who is loyal, devoted, and faithful. This kind of heart is already ready to receive the good things his grace provides. You know, beloved, God is always searching for someone to bless. That's his nature. He's full of mercy and compassion. Because of his favor, he looks for someone who's ready to trust him. Someone who's always ready to reach out in faith to receive his favor and blessing. Beloved, are you that kind of person? Are you the kind of person who's trustworthy? Who's loyal? I'm speaking of someone who's ready and willing to receive God's favor and blessing. Beloved, when I comprehended grace, faith came and I was born again. And I also found that God does take care of his people and he provides what we need. I'm not reserved when I say I've fallen in love with the word of God and my faith is my foundation. Even today, I gladly say, look, Lord, here I am. I'm ready. Just show it to me in the word and I'll take it. I'll believe it in it and act on it and receive everything you say. And you know what, beloved? You can do the same. If you would like to open a door to the favor and grace of God, and who wouldn't? Begin to find out what his word says. Mm -hmm. Discover the limitless ways he desires to bless you. Believe him. Begin to expect to receive. Every day declare what the Bible says. In Psalms 5, 12, I'm coming from the King James Version this time. The composer of Psalms says, God encompasses me with favor like a shield. Everywhere I go, everything I do, I am favorite of God. That's beautiful. That is so beautiful. It said, God encompasses me with favor like a shield. Everywhere I go, everything I do, I am favorite of God. Hallelujah. Now, that may not be easy for you to do if you're covered up by some challenging circumstances right now. You see, you'll have to stare those challenges in the face and declare to them that you're favored by God. When they're telling you, hey, stupid, things are terrible. It's all over. You don't have any hope. You look at them and you shake your head. And you tell them, you don't know the God I serve. Beloved, I'm telling you this morning, you can do it. You can do it. Because you're favored by God. There's plenty of scripture for you to stand on that affirms you're surrounded by God's favor. Mm -hmm. Beloved, begin confessing your faith today. Find you some scriptures that you can firmly establish in your heart and, and, and don't let them out of your heart. Don't let nobody turn you around. Even when circumstances seem to contradict what you're doing for God, stand firm and watch the salvation of the Lord. You may be in need of a job today. This may be the next step in your life toward God's plan and purpose for you. But, you know, many people are in need of a job today just like you are. So when you go in for that job interview, remember, favor is what you should believe God for. Beloved, look up some favor scriptures. Speak them over that job and, and just go in there expecting the Lord to give you favor. Remember, he favors you. You. Someone else may look better on paper than you do, 
But when you go in there, the favor of God goes before you. That interviewer will think, well, you know, that guy or that girl over there has done more or uh, uh, been uh, to school more, uh, uh, done something else more. But there's just something about this guy here. I like this guy. What is it about him? I don't know, but I like him. You know, I'm going to give him a shot at this job. Beloved. That's favor, and you've got it all over you. Walk in your favor. Beloved, you must release your faith for God's favor. Beloved, God's favor is yours, but there are a couple of things you have to do to fully enjoy its benefit. First, You have to receive God's favor like every other spiritual promise. You have to receive it by faith. Then you must release your faith. You see, that's what Abraham, the father of our faith, did. You see, the circumstances looked hopeless when God promised him that he would be the father of many nations. One was his age. And two, Sarah's lifelong infertility. So how could this be? Well, they received God's promise by faith and God's favor. Now, let's look at Romans chapter 4, verse 18 through 21 and verse 24. It reads this way. Who contrary to hope in hope believed so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken? So shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. But also for us, It shall be imputed to us who believe in him who raised up Jesus, our Lord, from the dead. And let's look at Romans 5, 2 right here. Romans 5, 2 says, Through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Beloved, just look at what Romans 5, 2 said. Just look at it for a moment. It says, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Beloved, we have access by faith into grace. Mm -hmm. God's favor surrounds us. Our faith releases it. My Lord, my God, look at that magnificent brilliance of God. Wow. We have access by faith into grace. God's favor surrounds us And it's our faith that releases it. So we're just like Abraham. That's how it is in life for all of us. Something, things does look bad. Mm -hmm. But we must, we must learn when we walk in faith and face the natural facts, we believe God anyway. Beloved, you have to grow to the point where you can hear bad news without wavering in your faith and receive God's favor no matter what the circumstances are. You see, receiving God's favor by faith is simply an act on our part. 
Get into God's word. Put the word into your heart and speak it out of your mouth. Believe it, receive it, and act on it. When you do that, you'll be victorious in every, every area of your life. There's no situation, no circumstances, nothing that is stronger than the grace of God. And I'm speaking of the favor that surrounds you. Beloved, whatever you may be facing today, stand up and get right in his face and say this to it. Say, I'm a born again child of almighty God. His supernatural favor surrounds me like a shield at this very moment. His grace is more than enough to deliver me out of this trouble. My faith is in God's word. And I'm coming out of this victoriously. By the favor of God. Believe that. Stand on it. Then begin to expect great things to happen. Beloved. This gift that God has blessed you with. Will change your life. Mm -hmm. I can honestly tell you from the word of God. And from my own experience. Your life will never be the same. When you act like. The favor of God is yours. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory for this message. Will you pray with me? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, today I declare that I have your favor. Lord God, I declare that I'm strong and very able to fulfill my God-given destiny. I know you're fighting my battles for me. I declare that I'm a victor and not a victim. I may have been defeated in the past, but the past is my past. This is a new day. Your word says that I'm the head and not the tail. I will lend and I will not borrow. Lord God, I believe everything I touch will prosper and succeed according to your perfect will because of your favor. I declare that by your stripes, I'm healed today. I will live and not die. I declare, Lord, that you're restoring health into me. And with long life, you satisfy me. Lord God, today I declare your favor in my relationship with you. Favor in my relationship with my spouse and my family. Favor in relationship with my friends. And favor in relationship in my business. I want to thank you for causing me to be at the right place at the right time, Lord. I want to thank you, Lord, for allowing people to come into my life and not center their attention on my youthful past of flaws. I want to thank you for removing the ones who look down on me because of my past as if they are flawless, faultless, and have no skeletons in their closets. I want to thank you, Lord, for causing people to want to help me. Today, Father God, I want to thank you for blessing me with creativity. I want to thank you, Lord God, for causing me to, to make good decisions with a clear mind. I declare that you are smiling down on me today and that your favor will be in everything I do because I'm pleasing to you. Lord God, I declare that I'll be blessed in the city. And blessed in the country, blessed coming in and blessed going out. Today, Lord God, I claim Psalms 84, 11, that you're blessing me with favor and honor and no good thing will you withhold from me because my walk is blankless. Today, Lord God, I, I claim Habakkuk 2, 3, that my vision is for an appointed time. And though it may tarry, I will earnestly wait for it, for it will surely come. Today, Lord God, I declare that I'm filled with your, your, with your I can do power. Lord God, between you and I, we're the majority. And I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I know that your word says that no man has seen, heard, or even imagined the wonderful things that you have in store for those that love you. And I want to tell you this morning that I love you. 
And I want to thank you for loving me. Lord God, I want to thank you for your favor today. Not because of who I am, but because whose I am. I'm a child of the most high God, the creator of the whole universe. This morning, I commit this day to you. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. And amen. Beloved, the best use of life is love. The best expression of love is time. The best time to love is now. So today, reach out to someone you love and tell them you love them. Because telling them later just might be too late. God bless you all. I love you all. And have a wonderful, wonderful Sunday. Yeah.